today, let's practice th and n consonants with Brooke Baldwin's last words at CNN on the 16th, April 2021. I got this. I got this. Deep breath. Deep breath, Brooke. Okay, let me let you in on a little secret. This job, my show here on CNN, was not originally supposed to be mine. More than a decade ago, there was an anchor suddenly departed CNN, leaving this gaping hole in the afternoons. And the then bosses quickly turned to me and they were like, Brooke, we're gonna need you to keep the seat warm just for a week until we actually find the person who will take over this show. Okay, well, guess what? I have kept the seat warm for nearly 11 years. You and I have witnessed history together from marriage equality to this pandemic, from the Women's March to Me Too, from natural disasters to, again, senseless shootings. And now we wait. We wait for the justice in a trial where another black man in America has died at the hands of police. This job, using my voice for over a decade, has been nothing short of a profound privilege. Short of a profound privilege. Short of a profound privilege is a rhetorical device called oxymoron. An oxymoron is a combination of contradictory or incongruous words which can seem absurd yet make perfect sense at the same time. Shorts are a kind of informal dress codes. Privilege means honor authorization. So you see why we say short of a profound privilege is an oxymoron. So we can say joyful sorrows and perfect imperfections. <laughs> so, to you at home, thank you. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for holding me accountable. And thank you for all of the love. I'm telling you, I'm reading every single one of your DMs. All right? Send them on. And to you, my CNN family, my CNN huddle, this is the hardest part. Thank you for making me better. Thank you for pushing me. Thank you for believing in me and my big backflip off the high dive today. You know, a decade ago, I didn't even know this should, show would become mine. And now, a decade later, I find myself in a similar situation, not totally knowing what's next. And I'm okay with that. Because what I do know is that I am a journalist and a storyteller for life. And lastly, I'm leaving this place even better than I found it. I'm borrowing a line from the leaders of the U.S. Women's National Team as told to me by Megan Rapino when I recently interviewed her for my book, Huddle. And she said it started with Mia Hamm and then Abby Wambach, and eventually it will be her fighting for what's right and fair and equal for the next generation of women's soccer players. These women, when they left the team, they would urge the remaining players to leave the team better than they found it. And so, here I am in relating it to journalism. Let me tell you something. When I saw all of those women recently, one after another after another, these White House correspondents for TV and print standing up to ask President Biden questions at his very first press conference, let me just say, I was sitting in my office, I was on my feet cheering them on. So many women, black, white, brown, progress. We do need diverse voices telling our stories from in front of the camera and to the executive suites. We are making progress. So, whatever industry you are in, my parting words, get a little uncomfortable. Speak up and keep pushing. Speak up and keep pushing.